Hi, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be looking at the Serenade for Violin and Harp. And I'm sorry if I butcher this composer's name. It's T-E-D-E-S-C-H-I. Tedeschi, Tedeschi. Um, I really need to learn how to say that name. This piece is in the key of A major, and I like it. It's something that we can find on IMSLP, so it's free and available for us. And I read through it the other day, and I, I like it. I haven't had a chance to play it with violin yet, but uh, I hope at some point I do. So let's go ahead and work our way through it. We are in 6-8, so that means we're going to have 6 beats in every measure, and the 8th note is going to get the beat. So when we're counting it, we'll count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Take a look at that first measure that we have. <clears throat> We have these uh, low notes that the bass in the bass of the left hand is taking. I would play all of those dotted half notes with your fourth finger. So playing those with your fourth finger, and then we see after the next two eighth notes, under the third eighth note, we see uh, letters M G. That is that stands for ma gauche, which in French means left hand. So left hand is going to take that first A, jump up, take that E. And they do have a fingering written there, second finger for those high notes with the left hand, that's perfect. What we should also understand is the harmonic progression, the chords that we're playing in each measure. Because that way it's going to help our hands, our fingers in the right hand, find these notes a little bit faster. So what I want to do is with those first two eighth notes in the right hand, which are played with two, four, one, three, I want to figure out what that chord is first. So if you add all four of those notes together, you get an A chord. So it's an A major chord, which makes sense. We're in the key of A major. So we're starting out nice and solid with the tonic. Now let's talk about how to play those first two notes, eighth notes in the right hand. Two and four, keeping one and three on, then playing one and three. And a nice close if you can, so when you play that two and four, you're not staying right there. You're coming all the way in. Next measure, we have, let's figure out the chord first. Uh, they've put in no more fingerings, which means it's going to be the same style of fingering that we're using, the same pattern. So two and four for the first notes and one and three for the next two notes. So these notes, B, D, E, G, when they're all played together, is an uh, E major seven chord. So, in other words, the fifth, the dominant of A major. So we're going from A to E7, back to A, back to E7. So it's, uh, we see a pattern here as well. We play a lot of the same notes within the first several measures. Use that pattern to work for you so that you don't have to keep trying to read those notes, find those notes, figure out what's the same and how many times we repeat it. So we would count this one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Violin comes in. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. Same thing. hand is on C, but the right hand is still playing the same notes, so just make that distinction. And if you look at the bass clef at this point, starting on that second line last measure, <clears throat> that dotted half C in the next measure B, keep going, A, keep going, G, keep going, F, keep going, E. So we're just going down the harp, that's another thing to point out there. As you're playing through this piece, I would say if, if this technique of two and four and one and three is a challenge for you and you feel that you are not technically ready for that challenge, uh, oftentimes, you know, we'll, we'll play pieces where we just can't do what's written of us and some, some, what's asked of us and some would say, then why do the piece in the first place? Um, you know, there, there are going to be pieces that are hard, sections that are hard, and we have to make do. Um, so a couple things you could do differently with this is play just the top notes. So going back to that first measure, 
Just the top notes with two and one, E and A. With the right notes, of course. You're not gonna get a full sense of the harmonic progression, the, the chord structure, um, but again, if it's a challenge for you to play, parse it, uh, just, just kind of take some notes out and figure out what, what's the most important notes to have to keep that harmonic structure. easier and um, you can see how it sounds with the violin. So other than learning the chord structure, learning what notes you're playing, this these first two pages basically take on the same kind of pattern. We just keep doing that two four one three. So second page. So what's not written in here are the pedal changes. Make sure to write those in at the end of uh, the second page, which at the top says number three, so page three in the piece itself, but the second page of the music. Um, at the bottom, we did have C sharp, I'm sorry, C natural, and A sharp. changes in. So four, two, one, four, two, one, four, two, one, octave with the left hand. <clears throat> Let's jump to page four, which is the third page of the music. Now we see Piumoso. So moving a little bit quicker, um, but we are instructed to be nice and pianissimo here delicate, we've got some faster notes, we're moving a little bit quicker. Um, again, identify the chord that you're playing. So let's go through and figure out what pedals we have. We have C natural, G natural, D natural, F natural. So it looks like we have all naturals. <clears throat> so if we take that first chord, again, playing that low dotted half with the fourth finger in the left hand, and we have 16th notes. Let's figure out what those notes are. G, C, E, G. Then we see this uh, eighth note. Left hand's going to take that again. It's not written in the music, but just have your left hand take it because it's assumed that it will take it because the right hand is playing four 16th notes before it. So figure out what that chord is. It's a C chord. We're still on 6 8, so what is our rhythm here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So two 16th notes for every beat. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Again, you patterns and repetitions to help you so that you don't have to keep looking for that, those notes, those chords. What I would do if I were going through this, top of page four, is put in the chord that we're playing. So um, above the heart part, below the violin part, I would put C, because we're playing a C chord. Then in the next measure, we need to figure out what we're playing. And if it's any if it's, if it's the same as the first page, the very start of the piece, we're going to be playing a 5-7 chord, so a dominant 7 chord. So let's figure out these notes, G, B, F, G, that is a 5-7 chord, so it's the dominant. We play that twice, but the right 
right hand, the left hand note changes at the top. Starts on D, and the next measure goes to B. Then we're back to a C chord. So I would write that above those measures. You know, this is a chance for you to exercise your harmonic analysis. Above those measures, put C, G7, G7. Well, I, you know, you could also do it harmonic analysis. One, five, seven, five, seven, one, one. Then we change. So that'll help. That should help as you're going through so that you don't have to keep finding those notes. And then I haven't looked at this, I haven't practiced it, so I'm going too fast. <clears throat> Um, but let's go back to the top of four. So let's just say that, again, this is a figure that learning is, it's just, there's too much going on. I think it's really important to have that first dotted half note at least so you can really hear that kind of pedal tone. If you want to leave out that top note that the left hand is playing, um, again, it's never ideal to leave anything out, but if it's a struggle and a challenge for you technically, you know, play around with it. There are some notes we can leave out and still get the sense of the harmonic structure. So if we are leaving out notes, you could leave out that top note, but if you do that, make sure the rhythm is really precise. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So all you're really focusing on is keeping your left hand there for that, that pedal tone, dotted half note and you're not having to spend time looking, going back and forth, trying to figure out where your left hand has to jump up and come back down as an option. Again, there's, now they have some pedal changes written in here. It's interesting what they have written in and what they don't have written in, so just go through and make sure you're very precise with where those pedal changes are. Also putting pedal diagrams in so that we know when your instructor says, okay, let's start at this rehearsal number, this page, this line, you're ready. You don't have to sit there and think, oh my gosh, what pedals do I have? That's, it's not a, not a good feeling. I've felt that before, it's not fun. So lots just litter the pedal charts throughout. Um, <clears throat> basically the same structure again. What's interesting about this part, if we jump to page five, the fourth page of the music, the next page, on the third line, there are double, double sharps written in, which we don't, as harpists, we don't see often. Um, but that should just uh, exercise our um, theory, understanding, and say, okay, well, if it's double sharp, then we're going to be doing enharmonics here. We're going to be playing a different note. And they're helping you out by that, giving you a G natural. So if we look at that first measure there, it's C sharp, D sharp, F double sharp, A sharp. So if that's the case, then instead of playing an F double sharp, which we don't do on the harp, it would be an N harmonic, we would just play a G. They're keeping that F double sharp written so that you understand the structure of the harmony um, and what chord is supposed to be played around, played with. So instead of that F double sharp, we would circle it, give it a nice perfect circle around that F double sharp, which in, uh, in, implies we're going to be playing an enharmonic for that note, so instead of an F double sharp, it's a G natural. So C sharp, D sharp, G natural, A sharp. I'm pretty sure we have C sharp at this point because I don't see a C natural. Again, at the top where our left hand, if you're playing those two notes, D, and instead of F double sharp, a G natural. Really 
comfortable with that. And then of course some pedal changes going on here. Okay. Without getting too much into detail with some of these notes, let's go to page six, the next page. Back to three uh, sharps, key of A major, and this is molto piumoso. So what first started out as 160 to the eighth note, which would be one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Piumoso gets a little bit faster. Then molto piumoso. Dotted quarter equals 92. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's nice and fast. Um, one, two, three, four, five, da, da, di, da, 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 da. All right, so we're not going to do it that fast right now. When we're first learning something nice and slow, we have the same figure in the right hand. And what's nice about this section is we do have a lot of repeated notes, so repeated concepts. So take a look at what the right hand, besides that left hand, bass, uh, E flat, dotted half note, take a look at what the right hand is doing. G and D and then B and E. So there's our figure, a fifth, and then a fourth. Take a look what the left hand does going up because this is going to be left, right, left, right, left, I'm sorry, right, left, right, left, right. And that's how I'd practice it. I would do it in chords as chunks, just like that together. So we can practice getting our fingers to the right strings as fast as possible. So all together, Left hand is doing G, D, E, B, exact same thing. So we're repeating that same, the same notes, just going up an octave, going up two octaves. Right, left, right, left, right. And left take, takes over one, four. So if we're doing that measure, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Because we're still in six, eight. Getting those fingers there as quickly as possible. Next measure, it's going to be the same thing in the left hand that's in the right hand, so just practice that as chords for four, two, three, one, A, C, F, G. It's going to be the same thing in the left hand, and then up again for the right hand. to get my fingers there as fast as possible. So we have this nice kind of E pedal tone in the left hand that we keep doing. And then right hand does its thing up and down. Again, if this is something that is technically challenge challenging for you and you feel like you can't quite get this figure, don't freak out. Instead, pare it down while still keeping the structure, the harmonic structure. I would do maybe just the top two notes, just like that. So you're only not doing the bottom two notes, you're just doing the top notes all the way around, which are D and E. And then they're F and G. And I'm noticing a pattern here. As I'm going through and doing that, doing just the top notes of the chords, I'm noticing a pattern. We start on D and E, then we go to F and G, G and A, a and B, A and B again with the C sharp, I'm sorry, E sharp, so it's a different chord, A and B again, A and B again. So it's good sometimes to just kind of take, take it out of context and look at one line only and see if there are any patterns going on. <clears throat> that pattern stays the same until the very last page of the piece where we have tempo one written and it, it it's an iteration, it's a recap, it's a recap of the, uh, of the beginning. And again we have some pedal changes here, F natural, C natural.
interesting chords, so how would we do this? One, two, three, four, five, six. Notice the last, the beat six, is a triplet sixteenth note. So one and two and three and four and five and six. And then we have this chord. Whatever the heck this chord is. A, C, E? No. A, C, C. A, C, C, E, A, E. One, three, one, four. I'm sorry. Four, three, one, four, two, one. And my assumption is I haven't listened to this piece yet, which is terrible. I need to listen to it so I know exactly how it goes. I would roll that last chord. One, and we're still having a retardando, lento, we're slowing down. I think this is a lovely piece. That's kind of the gist of it um, in a short lesson here. So uh, I'm going to practice this one and post my practice of it so you can kind of see my process, how I work through things. And uh, if you end up playing this one, enjoy it. Sounds nice.